Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be covering some things about scientific notation. It'll first cover what a number in scientific notation is and why we use it. We'll look at how to express numbers in both scientific notation and standard notation, and then how to do some calculations with numbers that are expressed in scientific notation. What scientific notation is, it's a way to take up less space when you're writing numbers that are expressing very large or very small quantities. So in science, there are times where we deal with very large amounts or very large measurements or very small measurements. For example, So for example, the number of helium atoms, if you had a balloon that was 2.24 liters, it would be this many helium atoms approximately. In a lab we did last year, we looked at how much dye was in certain sports drinks. And even the most, the darkest sports drinks still had a concentration that was reported as 0.0000072 capital M molar or molarity for concentration units. So again, there are very large numbers and very small numbers. And these two quantities take up way too much space on the paper. And so scientific notation is a way to express these same numbers but taking up less space. So this is a number in scientific notation. It's 2.3 times 10 to the eighth power, and then the units little m, meters. And there are a few parts to this. We can divide it into the first factor, which is what comes before the time sign, and the second factor, which is what comes afterward. The first factor always is a number that has one significant digit and then a decimal point and then possibly more digits, depending on the precision of the measurement. The second factor is always 10 raised to some power. So now we're going to look at how to take a number written in standard notation and how to change it into scientific notation and the theory behind that. We're going to use an easy example. We'll look at the number 205. Now really, if you were thinking about different ways that you could express the same amount, but with two factors multiplied by each other, where one of them is going to be 10 raised to some power, you could say that this really is the same as 2.05 times 100. So 2.05 times 100 would give you 205 grams. They mean the same thing. And also 100 
recall, is equal to 10 to the second power. And so we go from 205 to 2.05 times 100, and then 2.05, and we replace the 100 with 10 to the second power, and then I included the units. So the way you do this uh, without taking these steps is you think about where a decimal point would be, and if you are moving the decimal point to the left to change into this first factor with one significant figure, you will have a positive exponent representing how many spaces to the left the decimal point was moved. Conversely, if we had a number where we were moving the decimal point to the right, the exponent would be small. And so you can see then that a positive exponent represents a number that was large, a quantity that was large. A negative exponent represents a quantity that was small. So we'll do an example there as well. To reformat this into an intermediate, the first factor, again, it needs to be a number with only one significant figure. And so these leading zeros are not significant. We need to move the decimal point over so that it is going to be having the two, the one significant figure in front of the decimal point. And a second factor to get this number, so 2.05 times something, it would be one one thousand. So if you perform this on a calculator, you could say 2.05 times one divided by a thousand or 2.05 divided by a thousand would still give you this quantity. But one over 1,000 can be replaced like this. So here you can see the negative third is the exponent because it was one 1,000th. And you can also look back here, the shortcut is that I needed to move the decimal point one, two, three places to the right. And so it is a negative exponent. I want you to try on your own to do the first two examples, the number of helium atoms in a 2.24 liter balloon and the concentration of dye in a sports drink. See if you can put those two values into scientific notation. The opposite process works. Uh, if you understand that changing a standard notation number into scientific notation is that you're moving the decimal point to the left and it will be a positive exponent or to the right and it will be a negative exponent, you would use reverse thinking. And so you would say, if you have a scientific notation number with a negative exponent, that means you would be taking the decimal point and moving it to the left. Or if you have a scientific notation number with a positive exponent, you would be moving that decimal point to the right to change it into standard notation. Now, one thing I had forgotten to mention is that only significant figures get carried over from a standard notation number into scientific notation. So I did not include these leading zeros because they were not significant. Next, we're going to look at the different ways that you can do calculations with numbers that are in scientific notation. The easier ones are actually multiplication and division. We'll just look at a couple of examples, one multiplication and one division to get at these points. So we have two examples here, one multiplication and one division. They're going to work very similarly. The first step is to perform the multiplication or the division on the first factors. And 
And don't forget to follow Sig Fig rules. These are the two answers that the calculator gives, and these need to be rounded. This has only two sig figs, and this has three, and so our answer should only have two sig figs, so this will be rounded to 3.0. This value has two sig figs, and this has three, so the one with the least sig figs has only two, which means that our answer should only have two, and that would be rounded to 2.4. Now it should be noted that I rounded this down to zero and the rule about rounding is that if there is a five followed by nothing afterwards or followed by zeros afterward and you need to round it, is that you round up if it would make the digit that is being kept even and you round down if rounding up would make the the digit odd. So you're always trying to round in the way to make the digit even. So I would not round this to 3.1, it gets rounded down to 3.0. The next step is going to be to combine the second factors by performing those operations following exponent rules. So exponent rules, when you have the same base, which is 10 in this case, and you multiply, that means you're adding the exponents. So 10 to the third times 10 to the eighth power would give 10 to the 11th power. The opposite is true for division. If you have the same base, which we do, of 10, you would be subtracting the exponents, where 10 to the fifth divided by 10 to the fourth would be 10 to the first power. The last step, is going to be to combine the first factor with the last factor and include the units. Now, keep in mind that when you are doing mul multiplication and division problems, that the units are going to be either multiplied together, so meters squared, or divided as a ratio, like grams divided by milliliters would give units of grams per milliliter. Next, we'll look at addition and subtraction problems. So here we've got two examples, 2.8 times 10 to the third grams plus 8.12 times 10 to the second grams and 5.27 times 10 to the eighth liters minus 9.9 .9 times 10 to the fifth liters. For addition and subtraction, these examples, they need to be in the same units because it wouldn't make sense to subtract an amount of liters from a number of grams or a number of seconds from a bucket that you have that's five liters. Um, the first step is going to be to identify which of the numbers is the larger one. And you're going to take the other one, the smaller number in each case, and you're going to adjust it so that it is going to be expressed to the same power of 10 as the larger one. So in this case, because these are both positive exponents, the one that is smaller is the smaller value. And this is the one we're gonna be adjusting. We're gonna change it so that instead of it being 8.12 times 10 to the second power, that it is going to be some number that is raised to 10 to the third power. And the way that we do that, similar to how we got this, if we want to raise the power of 10, is we are going to move it to the left. And we're gonna move it one space because this is times 10 to the third and this is times 10 to the second.
in this one, the smaller value is here because this is times 10 to the positive eighth power and this is times 10 to the positive fifth power. So this is going to be the one that we're going to adjust. And again, to adjust a smaller number to be a bigger one, you're going to move the decimal place over a certain number of spots. And in this case, the difference between these exponents is three. So we're going to move the decimal point over three spots. Now that we have these expressed to the same power of 10, we can just perform the addition or subtraction following sig fig rules. The last step is just going to be to attach the power of 10 and the units. So uh, thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully that was clear enough. We'll do plenty of examples uh, for practice and don't be afraid to let me know if you still need more clarification.